Welcome to Kingdom Talks with PR, where the kingdom is explained in simplicity and power. God bless you as you listen. I sincerely want to thank God for the opportunity given to us to constantly learn at his feet and receiving his word. And um, since we started this uh, fear series, the Lord has been with us and we are gradually moving towards the end of the series as we have got into the fourth part of the series. And uh, on this fourth part, it is titled Dealing with the Spirit of Fear. The first part was what is fear and its origin and then the second was the negative fears and its effect then we went to the third part uh, the positive fears and the effect and today we are going to be dealing with uh, uh, the fourth part titled dealing with the spirit of fear but before we proceed let us pray our Father and our Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the enlightenment of our hearts. We thank you for the illumination of our lives. Lord, may your name be thou exalted. That even as we have come once again to learn at your feet, we ask that you would shine your precious light into our hearts and cause us to be more and more like Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right. Um, We are going to be dealing with two scriptures, mainly one from the old and the other from the new. We are going to begin with 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. For it reads, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. We must know what the Lord hasn't given to us. The first way to dealing with anything, any situation, you must know what the Lord hasn't given And then you must know the provisions he has made available. That is the only way you can fight it. That is the only way you can deal with it. And so scripture said, aside from the positive fear that we treated last week, when we talked about the reverential fear of the Lord, you know, according to our definition, the third definition, when we said, a feeling of profound respect for someone or something and this is what we defined our positive fear on not for anything else but for the Lord but what Bible told us it said for God has not given us a spirit of fear then what did he give us he gave us the spirit of power the spirit of love and then the spirit of sound mind. These were the things he gave to us. Power to withstand the evil days. Power to conquer daily and not to be fearful when or fret at every situation. We must be dexterous enough to face and to conquer every day, every minute, every second, every hour of our lives. And then, he gave us the spirit of love. Bible told us that love conquered multitude of sins. A heart of love is a heart of courage. A heart of love is a heart of freedom. A heart of love is a heart of peace. So what has the Lord given us? He has given us the spirit of 
power, the spirit of love, and then the spirit of sound mind. Sound mind. A mind of knowledge, a mind of understanding, a mind of revelation. For Bible told us in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, I think so, it says, But being transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewer of our mind is what causes our minds to be sound by the word of God. So it is very important that we understand what the Lord has given to us to fight what he hasn't given to us. Hallelujah. This was the reason why he spoke certain words to Joshua. And if you check from our series thus far, we've been saying that it is natural for man to be fearful due to the fallen nature of man. However, <clears throat> to be fearful can do more harm than good. Especially if it's not the positive fear. And so, when God was going to raise Moses, I mean Joshua, in the stead of Moses, he had to incessantly warn him against fear using these words. Uh, maybe I should run through from verse 1 if we have the time. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that this is Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the lands of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, <clears throat> shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the day all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee be strong and of a good courage for unto these people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous. Take note that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, had commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Twice the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. These are the words of faith. Because in the journey of life, if you are not strong, if you are not of good courage, not just courage or courageous, you must be of good courage. There is no way 
you can conquer. Many people that have failed today, they didn't fail because they cannot be successful, but because they are afraid, they are not strong in heart, neither are they courageous to take the bull by the horn. So that was why Joshua was told and commanded to be strong and of a good courage. And in order for this to happen, the scriptures should be our guide. And so, in verse 8 of Joshua chapter 1, Bible told us, it said, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy heart. So it is what the word of God says that you make sure that you follow. That is the only way we cannot fail. So what has the word of the Lord told us about our business? What has the word of the Lord told us about our marriages? What has the word of the Lord told us about our health? What has the word of the Lord told us about our children? When we put all of this into practice, that is strength in itself. And the best way to have good courage, you must see them. You, we must draw our strength from the pages of the scriptures. That is how prosperity in every facet of our lives can be a reality. So, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says once more, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, but of love, and of sound mind. So sound mind is the renewer of our mind with the scriptures. And from there, we get to see the love, how love is a tool for a, to living a life of a conqueror. And then how it produces power for a kingdom living so we don't fret and fidget over every situation if there's a challenge look at the word of the lord let it strengthen you from your innermost being hallelujah so this is the word of the lord the best way to dealing with fear number one know what the lord has given you know what he has given you so he didn't give you the spirit of fear he gave you the spirit of power the spirit of love and then of a sound mind and then the scriptures must leave the the the, the, the paper format into being engraved into your heart on a daily basis for the word of the Lord says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you thou must meditate during day and night. So these are some of the ways of dealing with the spirit of fear. Every heart that reverence God is not afraid of any situation, no matter how dicey they might be. So I would want to advise and prescribe for you the last series on the positive fear. And as a matter of fact, from part one of this series to this present part, to the fourth part, and even to the fifth, fifth part, should be a must for you to listen as the Lord will grant us grace to live above the spirit of fear timidity and cowardness hallelujah and so father we give you praise lord we thank you for your precious word that has come to us once again we ask that you give us a grace to be dexterous the boldness the boldness that we need to conquer and above all the spirit of faith being in us to help us live in a life 
of victory perpetually. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us through this series thus far. May your name be thou exalted. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. We believe you have been blessed. As the word says in Psalms 36 verse 9, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. God's empowering word infused into our life makes us feel free indeed. We would love to hear from you. Contact us to share your testimonies for prayers and counselling. Our details can be found in the description box. God bless you.